Okay, so I have my Roman shade laid out on my cutting mat with the right side down because we're going to sew the rings on the back side of your Roman shade, obviously. I have it lined up so that it is square on my cutting mat because I want to make sure that I sew my rings across horizontally square. I don't want them to get um, cockeyed, otherwise your Roman shade will hang lopsided and you don't want that. Okay, now that my fabric is all laid out nice and flat, I need to lay out my rings and determine my ring, my vertical ring spacing. And standard is between five and 12 inches for your vertical ring spaces. I've got uh, just clear rings that I bought at Joann Fabrics. They're just uh, Roman shade rings. You can get them white, you can get them clear, you can get them on Amazon, Joann's. So I laid my first ring at three inches above my bottom hem and then six inches is what I did between my rings because I wanted a lot of folds um, so that it looked like more fabric on my window with um, shallower folds, smaller folds. Um, so I went six inches between my rings. You can go up to 12 inches and you'll have a deeper fold, but um, my window is pretty uh, small so I wanted to have narrower folds, uh, therefore I did six inches between my vertical ring spacing. And that's personal preference. You lay it out and give it a try. Um, so then the next thing is your thread. You want to use a nice strong upholstery thread or quilting thread like I did. And then when you thread your needle, double up your thread. So bring the tail all the way down to meet the other end of your thread. So you've got a double thickness and put a knot in the bottom of both pieces of thread together. So you've got a nice double thickness of thread. That way, when you sew your rings on, you only have to do two or three stitches. You're not sewing rings on all day long. You don't want the ring sewing to take for eternity because it gets kind of boring and you're going to be sewing a lot of rings on here. So make sure you double up your thread. So to bring you in a little bit closer, um, here I'm just doing my three stitches on, on a ring. I, I hold the ring with my thumb and then just come in with my needle underneath the ring and then up through the center of the ring and just do that three times. Then on my last stitch I run the I bring the needle up through the loop in order to create a knot and then I actually tie another knot. Cut it off and put a new knot in the bottom of my thread and move on to the next ring. Um, pretty simple, just uh, don't, don't overthink it and don't worry about how those stitches are coming out, you'll get it. Um, so there I'm holding the ring, bring the needle up through the center of the ring and then same thing one two three times uh, actually i'm doing four there so um, when you get going fast it's easy to get carried away it's really not necessary to do four three is more than enough hold that knot and pull that tighten it down and that's it so you just have to do that 30 more times <laughs> All right, so that's it for vertical spacing between five and 12 inches vertical spacing. Now horizontally spacing your rings. Um, again, you really don't wanna go more than 12 inches horizontally across your shade from side to side. So unless you want a real relaxed look where your shade drapes low in the center and gives you a nice deep smile, um, then you can just put a ring on either side if that's the look you're going for. But if you want your shade to be um, square and um, straight, then you're going to need more rings horizontally. I actually started this, as you can see, I'm folding my shade in half to mark the center because I was just going to do one um, row up the center and then the two on the sides, but as it turned out, after I got the rings all sewn on and I, you know, raised and lowered my shade, I realized I, that wasn't quite enough because that's actually 17 inches on each side. My shade's 35 wide. So I took all those rings out and I re-sewed them 
with four rows of stitches, the two on the outside edges and then two more in the center so that it came out to be about 12 inches between each exactly. And that's enough for me because it, with that spacing, it ra my shade raises and lowers nice and square. Um, this shade is for my kitchen window and I'm never going to probably operate this shade. I'll hang it and then tie off my cords on a cleat on the wall and it'll probably stay that way forever. So if that's your case and you're not going to be raising and lowering your shade every day, then you can go with less um, horizontal rows of rings. Um, but if you are going to be using your shade every day, then you want to do more horizontal rows. Don't go any wider than 12 inches between your rows of rings. Okay, one thing about the um, horizontal spacing of your Roman shade that's important is you want to make sure that you are square on your Roman shade so that your rings are horizontally even or level with the bottom of your shade so that your shade doesn't um, get off square or cockeyed when you pull your rings up, when you open your shade. So make sure that you measure from the bottom of your shade up. Okay, so the next step is to mount your shade on a board. And I just use a straight, plain pine one by two for this. You can use anything that you have or go to the hardware store and buy a one by two. You could use a one by four, a one by three. Um, you could, I mean, you could even use a two by, but it, that gets thick and heavy. So any one by material will work just fine. And then you want to wrap that with fabric. So I'm just using the lining fabric, which is a sheet that I bought at a thrift store. That's what I lined my curtain, my Roman shade with. Or you could use the fabric, your decorator fabric. It's up to you. I don't like to see a decorator fabric on the outside of my window. I'm funny about curb appeal. I don't want to look at colorful fabric on the outside of my window. So I always use the lining fabric to cover my mounting board and you're gonna just cover your mounting board just like you're wrapping a present pretty much exactly like you're wrapping a present you're gonna do the ends just like you'd wrap a present um, fold in a triangle and then you know fold that on top of each other and staple it all down to your board I'm using a pneumatic staple gun with my compressor but you can just use a a manual arrow staple gun for this part that works just fine so hold your corner in staple it down and then you see that's how you do the the present end like a, like a gift wrap um, so I do mine a little bit different where I leave the one side open and then I tuck the unfinished edge top edge of my Roman shade into that fabric and staple it all down just so that there's no exposed raw edges but that's not necessary okay so just so you know this side the bottom that the part that's against my table right now is going to be the part that is down the part that we're stapling the fabric is going to be up against the top of your window frame so you won't see that. The nice smooth side is going to be the part that you'll see outside the window if, if you pay attention to that part. nobody You may not even see it at all. Anyway, so now I'm laying out my Roman shade on the board so I can actually mount that to the board. And this part, it's important that you mount your shade square on the board so that, again, your shade is hanging level and even in your window frame so that the sides are parallel to the side of your window frame and your your shade is not hung crooked in your window frame so just that's why I use my gridded mat so I make sure that my piece of one by two is square on my gridded mat and that my Roman shade fabric is square on there as well so I know I've got that
Okay, so this is the part that I do a little bit different by covering up that raw edge. You don't have to do it this way, but I do it this way just because that's what I've always done. So I take that lining fabric and overlap it over the top of the raw edge of my Roman shade and then fold it under so the raw edge of the lining is enclosed and then I staple it down. So obviously you don't have to do it this way. You could just wrap your mounting board and then staple your shade on the top, but this is just an extra little bit of uh, fanciness, I guess. Totally not necessary. Just staple your shade on and hang it. So the it's almost all stapled together. Put in the last couple staples and then you'll see how this mounts in your window. So that part that you just stapled is gonna go against the top of your window frame or you know it'll be up if you're doing an outside mount but nobody will ever see that top part. That's the way it looks. The Roman shade water falls down the front of the piece of the wood and um, it looks looks nice. Okay, so now for actually stringing your shades. This part you can do very simply with just eye hooks, um, like the ones I've got there. Those there are really, really tiny. I generally don't go that tiny, but that's what I had. And you can order one of these pulleys. Um, if you plan on raising and lowering your shade quite a bit, it's not a bad idea to put a pulley on the one side where all of the um, shade string or the lift cord accumulates all over to that one pulley. Um, because if you're going to be raising and lowering your shades a few times a day, it, they do get a little bit worn out on the eye hook on that one side. So it's not a bad idea to put a pulley on the one side. And then just eye hooks at the top of uh, where all your lift cord goes. So just line up your eye hooks to your lift cord and go ahead and pre-drill your holes. So get out a nice tiny drill bit and pre-drill the holes for your eye hooks. Okay, and once your eye hooks are all installed into your mounting board, lined up with your rings, your rows of rings, then you're gonna string them through each of the eye hooks and uh, bring them all to either the left or the right, whichever side you prefer, or whichever side's easier for you to reach on your window, or whatever makes the most sense on your window, to have them all come to the left side or all come to the right side, that's completely up to you. Um, you can do it either way, it doesn't make any difference, just so long as all of your lift cords are strung through each of the eye hooks and all the, all over to one side or the other. Okay, and the last part is to actually mount this in your window and make sure that you measure properly and you measure the actual top part of your window because I didn't do that. I measured the bottom and the top was about a quarter of an inch narrower and when I went to hang it, it didn't fit so I had to open up the lining and cut off a little piece. So make sure you see there I couldn't get it in there so I had to take it down, cut it, and then put it back up. I tried, but it wouldn't fit. So anyway, make sure that you measure the exact spot where it's going to be mounted, the top part of your window. And then you just put a couple screws in there. There's always a good frame inside of your wall, inside your window there. So just put a couple screws in the top of your board, screw it right into the top of your window frame, and that's it. Then you just raise up your um, with your lift cord and style your shade. So raise it up, tie it off to your cleat that you've put in your wall and then style style it which means just straighten out your fabric make sure the folds are the way that you want them to make sure your rings are tucked back and your folds are nice and out in front and that's all there is to it it's a really simple process it doesn't cost a lot of money to make a roman shade so go for it give yourself some grace and uh, give it a try you guys you can do it